Hello and welcome to Python Fundamentals. In this course, we learn the underpinning Python programming skills, preparing for our journey towards mastering the Django framework and the Python programming language. This tutorial is part of a series of tutorials. You can find the link to the whole playlist in the video description. This tutorial is from our Python Programming Fundamentals for Django Developers course, which you can find and purchase on Udemy. You will find all the latest and updated tutorials, as well as resources and assessments to help accelerate your learning of the subject. The link to the course, which will always provide the best price, can be found in the video description. We saw in the previous example a simple use case for a loop looping through a Django query set. Now let's put this into context here. In this tutorial, we're going to output the Django query set to a template. We're going to loop through the data and display it on the template. Now this is probably a very common activity to perform whenever you're building certain types of applications with Django. Whether that be extracting data from the database, because of a search input from a user, or whether it be accessing a web page which has multiple items and that data is generated from a database. You can probably think of lots more examples where we need to extract data from the database and display that data to the user. Generally, that data will need to be looped through, iterated over, and then presented on a template so that the user can view that data. This is where we left off in the previous tutorial. We created this very simple loop here, this for loop to limp, loop through the data from the database. We only have three items in the database, loop through and then present or print to the terminal. So let's remove that now. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do here in this project is we need to pass the data that we've gathered or generated from the database. We need to pass that back over to the template. So here we're going to build this context here. So we're going to call this uh, data. We're going to call this data. Uh, so we're going to access this data on the template referencing data. And then we then specify the data that we want to access through that keyword on the template. So this is our data from the database X. Right, so let's now go over to our templates and our templates here. And you can see in general terms, our template is a HTML page. So although we are essentially working within a HTML page, Django provides us some built-in template tags and filters. And we can use these tags to generate, for example, in this case, a Python loop. Tags are normally opened and closed. So we need to open them and close. So we open up the for loop and then we need to end the for loop. So with the end for tag, let's, let's write this in, end for tag, okay. And now we can specify within these tags like we would do a, a normal kind of for loop. So uh, let's go ahead and now specify x, so for x, or for data, whatever you want to say, let's go for for value in, in what exactly? Well, you'll notice here that we're passing over our data. Okay, so we're passing our data that we return from the database. We're building this data structure here and we're referring to this data X as data and that gets passed over here to our template. So we need to refer to that data as data, the word data. So for value in data, now remember this is going to be now an iterable. So we're going to pass each piece of each element or each object across to val and then we can perform some sort of action. So when we want to print out a variable, for example, we need to use the double braces. So if we were to, for example, print this out, let's give it a go and see what happens. So let's go into the terminal here. Let's run the server and fire this up. And you can see that I do have a syntax error here. Good. So let's go back to my views. I'm going to need a comma here before the context. Okay, so that needs to be put in place. So now the server is running. So let's go back into our server here. So one, two, seven, zero, one, eight thousand. That's my home page. I'm going to press refresh. 
and you can see what is outputted is the default return, the Dunder string method, Xander, Ali, and Key. And hopefully we're getting a bit familiarized ourselves, familiarizing ourselves a little bit more with that. So here we have the default string return, which represents um, each of the objects that we are returning. Now, what we want to do is we want to get that object and we want to potentially access the data that's inside of that object. At the moment, we're just returning the object and by default, we're just printing out the name. So let's see how we can actually refer to these different fields and the data that is held within those fields. Okay, so back to my template here. Now we know that this is potentially the object, so we could potentially utilize this dot approach again. Now remember we did this in the previous tutorial when we were initially exploring the data set. And now we can access maybe the individual fields. So let's, for example, type in name because that's the name of the first field. And we have age and mobile. So let's just print out the name, age, and mobile. See if we can do that. Now, this is likely going to be all on one line, even though I've separated this into three lines because we don't have any HTML structure here. So let's just print that out. And you can see it looks like that is working. So let's just go for a new line for each. So I'm just going to wrap this up in my P tags. Now, notice here I'm mixing up Python and HTML. Okay, so the HTML is outside of any double braces here or the tags. That's important. So I'll just go ahead and add these in. So just to add a little bit of structure here to the code. Here we go. So we have the first data, Xander 10 and this number. And then we have the second object that's returned from the database and the third object. So there's a simple example, extracting data from our database using a simple query and then looping through that data within our template. And we've seen that Django provides us a number of different tags. Apologies, you don't know that because I haven't shown you. If you go over to the documentation, have a look at the built-in template tags and filters. There are some additional examples here, as well as a list of all the different built-in tags that are available. Some of them map across to some of the basic structures that we might want to build within our template. So here we were utilizing the for tag, and this gives you a little bit more information about it and some additional examples.